Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. Now we heard a lot of how to measure electrical variables. Now we want to measure non-electric variables. Right? Therefore we need some things called a sensor. Let's think about what we learned about the measurement chain. Yeah? So there is some, some physical quantity. which is influencing a sensor. Here we have the sensor. The signal of the sensor is gained by an amplifier. And then probably displayed or otherwise processed. Uh, right, processed. Displayed. This was the typical measurement chain. All right. So we need some sort of sensor which is changing a parameter. And there I have, for instance, a sensor. This here. This is a temperature sensor. Depending on the temperature, it is going to change the parameter of resistance. Resistors. Resist this is changing the resistance huh? according to heat. Here's another sensor, this one, looking very similar, also changing resistance, huh? however not because of heat but because of light. So if there is a high illumination this will have low resistance, if there is low illumination this will have high resistance and this will change resistance according to temperature. Yeah, so say, same working principle, however, measure different physical quantities. What is this? This is also a temperature sensor, so this is measuring the same physical quantity. However, this is a more intelligent sensor. This sensor has plus and minus. This is only changing resistance. They have need an amplifier to amplify. Amp to, to gain the resistance change or the determine the resistance change and so on. And this here, this is intelligent. It has a plus and minus and it has a data line. You know, it has a data line. It has bus communication already built in. So this sensor is really intelligent. Then here we have also some sort of temperature sensor. Yeah? PR sensor, this is called. Usually used as movement detection. Yeah? However, this is working totally different than the other ones. This is some pure electric effect. So, you see, yeah, the sensors can have different working principles, really a lot of different working principles, and therefore you can categorize them. Yeah? And they also encapsulate quite a number of, you see, there is a lot of stuff on. Yeah, this sensor. Here there's a lot of stuff. So they already have built in an amplifier and everything which is necessary to, to, to cope with the sensor. Yeah? So there might also be combinations like for instance this, yeah? possible combination. This combination is already very, very, very often, eh? uh, often used as combination. Okay. Then you get directly from the sensor out, I don't know, a 4 to 20 milliampere signal or something like this. This is very common. All right. And since there are so many sensors out the market, you can categorize them. Yeah? You can categorize them by different ways, simply. Yeah? So these two, yeah? these two are working resistance sensors. Yeah? The, you can categorize them in terms of, of uh, working principle, yeah? changing the resistance, resistance sen sensors. Yeah? There's also movement sensors, yeah? potentiometers to determine the position or so on. Yeah? Resistance sensor. You can, this would be these two. Yeah? Put this away here. Yeah? 
these two would be resistance sensors. Yeah? Then you could categorize them by the physical quantity which they are measuring. Then these two are temperature sensors and this one is an is, uh, uh, illumination sensor. You know? Then these two are the equals. Uh, you know, it's, usually it's obvious yeah, to categorize them. So this is a resistance temperature sensor. This is a resistance illumination sensor. This is an intelligent temperature sensor. And so on. Yeah, often those categories are very obvious. Let's call it like that. Yeah. Uh, here we have those sensors. So, uh, there are a lot of sensors in place. A lot of sensors in place. And the amount of sensors is getting more and more and more. And also the market share or the... the no, how big the market is, it is always growing. Yeah. So if we have a look at the market, yeah, sensor market. In 2006, we had around 81 billion dollars billion all right euro because we're in europe yeah. in 11 yeah, we had around 120 billion in 16 we had already 185 billion also the covid 19 pandemic you know dropped a little bit but not too much it is expected expected in 2028 it, we have around 350 billion dollar sensor market. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. growing, 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 and it's no, no, it's not really a mystery, right? Because everything is measured now. A lot of sensors in place, a lot of things. I uh, know uh, around 20 percent. Yeah. Approximately 20% of sensors are in transportation. Around 20% IT and communication, also 20%, you know. And where are we? Yeah, around 8% mechanical engineering. This one is inc even increasing the market share. Huh? In total, all sensors are increasing. Yeah, but the, the shares and transportation is, is currently really increasing. We'll see uh, how this in future will be. But you know, this is the estimate for 2028: 350 billion euros and on sensor market yeah so we have a big huge uh, area yeah? and more and more sensors to come put it like that the more and more sensors we do the more and more amplifiers we need okay how we can imagine such an amplifier as working, we will hear in next video. Right? Next video is about amplifiers. Basic amplifying, you know, just, just ground things. What is an amplifier and so on. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.